All right, so next up we have our results. Um, the results paragraph is where people tend to miss the most points on their reports. It's really not a hard section to write, but there are a lot of like little bits and pieces that people overlook and forget. And I think that's why people tend to miss a lot of points on it. Um, but notice it is worth 14 points out of 50. So that's a considerable amount. That's about 30% of your grade for this assignment. So, um, so yes, please <laughs> pay attention to all the little details um, and you'll be fine. Um, okay. So on the actual paper, um, we need to have a paragraph that describes uh, the data that we found. Um, and it needs to give us kind of the, the obvious or major trends that you see within that data, as well as pointing out any interesting or significant outliers from the data. Um, so here they tell us that there was not an obvious trend that showed um, which potato type the mealworms preferred. Okay, so that's our trend. Um, but then interesting features of that data, they tell us that during trials one and three, most of the mealworms went to the raw potato, but during trials two and four, most of the mealworms went to the potato chip. Um, so that's good. Again, they gave us the trend and then they told us like an interesting, kind of some interesting outliers from the data. Um, what you also need to include in your paragraph is um, references to the table and figure. What that means is that um, when you give a, a piece of information in your paragraph, um, you can point to the table or figure when it's appropriate to look at that to see that information on that table or figure. So like here they said, during trials one and three, most of the mealworms went to the raw potato, but during two and four, most of the mealworms went to the potato chip. And then here they say table one. So then that directs us like, oh, okay, look down at table one to see that information. And then we see, oh yeah, during one and three, we see that they're preferring the raw potato, but then during two and four, they're preferring the potato chip, right? Because if you can't tell us to look at the figure for that since the figure shows the averages. So that makes sense for that information to look at the table instead of the figure. So that's great. They have their reference to the table. And then they say, however, on average, so this already we know since we're talking about the average, it's going to be more appropriate to look at the figure. However, on average, the mealworms preferred the potato chip. And then again, we have our reference there, figure one. So that directs us, okay, go look at figure one now. And there's figure one. Okay, so that's something that people miss a lot is their references to the table and figure. You can't just write a paragraph and then just have like random pictures down at the bottom, again, they need to be incorporated into the text through those references, telling the reader when to look um, at that at that information. All right, um, and then remember, you also need to, the paragraph also needs to go over the p-value and talk about the standard deviation. Um, so here they say the standard deviation is fairly large compared to the average for each treatment. Okay, so, um, so yeah, that's how you decide how big or small a standard deviation is, is by comparing it to the average. If your average is five and your standard deviation is four, like, wow, that's huge, right? That's 80% of your average. If your standard, or sorry, if your average is five, but your standard deviation is one, oh, that's about 20%. That's really not very big compared to the average. However, if your average was one and your standard deviation was one, that's 100% of your average, that's a huge standard deviation, and that data would be considered like really unreliable. Um, so again, they they told us um, their, you know, how their standard deviation compared to the average, because um, that's important. They reported their p-value here, and then they just said, you know, is it significant or insignificant? Remember, the cutoff for significance is 0 0.05. So if it's below 0 0.05, it is significant. If it's above 0 0.05, it is insignificant. So at 0 0.0896, uh, that's above 0 0.05, so that is insignificant, like they've reported. Um, so three points from this section are your, like how you describe the data and whether or not the way that you're describing the, the data is really accurate and really represents the experiment that you did. Um, so if you have any confusion about what your data means or how to interpret it, please ask. That's really one of the biggest skills that we want you to get from this class is how to interpret data, okay? All right, so now let's actually look at the table and the figure. Um, let's do the table first. Um, the table is pretty easy. You have your different treatments up here at the top. So they have potato chip and raw potato, so those are the treatments. And then on 
the vertical side, they have all their different trials. And then of course, you know, in the middle is uh, all of the numbers from each of those trials. Um, at the bottom, you need to give the mean or the average um, for each treatment. And then you need to give the standard deviation for each treatment. And then you can give your PE value for the experiment as a whole. So notice for the means and the standard deviations, you're gonna have a separate number for each treatment, but the p-value is just gonna give you one number for the whole experiment. And then their description, the description for the table is super easy. It just says table one is the raw data collected for each trial. Like literally all of you could put that and you would get full points for your table description. <laughs> all right, so then the harder part is the graph. Deceptively simple looking, I think. Um, okay, so there's, again, a lot of little bits and pieces that go into doing the, the graph. So make sure that you reference your rubric, um, see all of this, like from here down, from figures down, all of that is points just for the figure. So that's, again, a good amount of points that are just for the figure. So again, look over that if you're confused, you know, print it out, make little checks or cross through. Um, you know, when you do the, the units, okay, cross that out. When you do the title, cross that out. Anyway, so people will miss a lot of points here. So just go over this and check it off and you probably won't miss points. Okay, so um, let's talk about the actual graph itself first. Um, so notice the graph does have a title. Okay, notice that the y-axis, so all these comments are right here. Okay, I'm sorry, they're not on the same page, but... Um, Okay, so your graph has a y-axis that is titled with your dependent variable, so that was number of mealworms for them. Their x-axis uh, was titled with the independent variable, or should have been titled, sorry. Um, so yeah, they don't have that x-axis title here, um, but they could do like different calorie-dense potatoes, like would be fine as a title for them. Um, their bars are labeled with the names of their different treatments. So they got that. They got potato chip on one and raw potato on the other. Um, they have their error bars, which are shown as the standard deviation. So to draw your error bars, you need to go one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below your average. Um, so that's all you need to draw for those. Um, they have these numbers here in the bars. Don't include those. Okay, do not put those in there. That's confusing. I don't like them. Does it refer to the average? Does it refer to the standard deviation? Sometimes people do both. Don't You don't need to have any numbers on your graph at all, okay? Um, and then, of course, all of this is readable. The text is large enough. Um, they haven't done crazy colors or anything, so make sure that you can actually, like, see it. Um, okay, so that is the graph. Okay, and then what people often forget or lose points on is the figure description. Um, so it should just be kind of a brief statement that gives you a gist of what the data looks like. So it says figure one shows the amount of mealworms that went to each side after five minutes. Then they said the average number of mealworms choosing potato chips is only slightly higher than those choosing raw potatoes. Um, so again, they have given kind of the gist of their data without discussing their hypothesis. So they haven't said mealworms obviously prefer higher density forms of potatoes. Okay, do not discuss your hypothesis in your results section. Your results section, your language should very, very specifically only be discussing your dependent variables and your treatments. Okay, so don't talk about, don't describe your hypo hypothesis or say whether your hypothesis are, is accepted or rejected at all um, in your results section. Um, they told us what the standard deviations are. They did an unpaired t-test, so they only got one standard deviation, but if you're doing an ANOVA, you're gonna have different standard deviations for each one. Um, and the, uh, sorry, and is shown as the error bars and the p-value is point, uh, that should be 0 0.0896. Um, there we go. Okay, um, so, Okay, actually, yeah, it should have been 0.896. That first one was a typo, sorry. Um, there we go. Okay, now it's fixed for when you look at it. Okay, all right, so anyway, so they've given us a standard deviation, tell us what it's the error bars, and they've given us the p-value. Um, so again, it's not hard. You're, you're really just putting the same information in multiple different places. Kind of the point of having these figure descriptions where you have 
all of this information that's on it, even though that information is available in the table. And maybe you put that information, you know, in your actual paragraph too. Is so that really as scientists, when we flip, when we are looking at a paper, we usually read the abstract. And then a lot of times we just flip through to the results and then we look at all the graphs. So um, this kind of gives you a quick reference. You can look at the table or the figure. You can you can kind of see what happened with the experiment. You can read the statistical specifics underneath, and then you don't necessarily have to read the entire results section. So um, anyway, so that's why you do this, is so that I'm not looking at the figure and then trying to hunt around in the text to figure out, okay, well, what was the p-value? It was a standard deviation. What were the values of the averages? Like that sort of thing. So um, you should just give it all here. So again, it's like a quick reference. Um, okay, I think that's everything from the results section. Again, just make sure you are not interpreting your hypothesis in your results section. Don't give materials and methods in your results section. Don't give any introduction like stuff in your results section. You're just talking about the numbers that you got and what's interesting about them, and that's it. Okay, all right, so we will stop this and then we'll move on to the discussion section.